My name is Paul Lee. I'm the father of a child in Glanmire Community College. This video is primarily addressed to Mr. Dennis Leaney, Chief Executive of the Cork Education and Training Board, but also concerns Mr. Ronan McCarthy, Principal of Glanmire Community College. I am extremely concerned about the situation with regard to the wearing of face masks by children in schools. As we all know, children are not susceptible to illness from COVID-19 and therefore should be free of all measures that restrict their movement and development in their sensitive years when interruptions are most damaging. I'll now read out briefly the correspondence between myself and Mr. Leamy and Mr. McCarthy. I'll then finish with a demand for a response. My correspondence with Mr. McCarthy began with a registered letter on the 12th of September 2021, where I requested two things. Number one, a risk assessment for the implementation of wearing masks in school. And number two, a request for details of insurance cover, specifically face masks, along with details of full legal and financial cover. An email response from Mr. McCarthy referred me to the Cork Education and Training Board. On the 1st of October 2021, I sent a registered letter to Mr. Leamy requesting the same information as was requested of Mr. McCarthy. On the 4th of October 2021, I received a response from a junior of Mr. Leamy, Mr. McKelvey, which suggested that I look up the HSE website for official guidance. The response I received didn't address either of my questions. On the 13th of October, I sent another registered letter which requested a direct response from Mr. Leamy. On the 15th of October, I received a response from Mr. Leamy repeating the earlier message from Mr. McKelvey stating please refer to Mr. McKelvey's letter. On the 14th of October my letter to Mr. Ronan McCarthy expressed my disappointment with regard to the responses from both Mr. Leamy and Mr. McCarthy. Mr. McCarthy did assure me during our subsequent meeting that he did not wish to give the impression that he was ignoring my communications. I've accepted his response. I requested a meeting with Mr. McCarthy and this was granted, thankfully. The meeting took place in Mr. McCarthy's office in Glanmire Community College on the 3rd of November 2021. Following the meeting, I produced a draft memo, which I subsequently updated in response to remarks from Mr. McCarthy, which I welcomed. I'm waiting notification of an agreed statement of the memo with regard to the contents. In the meeting with Mr. McCarthy and Vice Principal Gertie Cahill, I produced extracts from a study by the Doyle Aaron Special Committee on Response to COVID-19, which took place on the 13th of August 2020. This is a direct quote from Professor Carl Heenahan of the Centre for Evidence-Based Medicine in Oxford University. Quote, again, this is about evidence. In 2010, at the height of the last pandemic, 
there were six published trials of about 4,000 people. Since then, we have not addressed the lack of evidence and closed that graph. In the intervening 10 years, there have been another six trials. If one looks at the 12 trials together, I assume that there were six trials pre prior to the one that he mentions. If one looks at the 12 trials together, what they show in healthcare professionals is that masks, masks, gloves, and a combination of PPE reduces the risk of infection. When one goes in to the wider population, there is a small bit of evidence that shows that if one has influenza in one's household, a child for example, and if one wears a mask for one week in the house, one can reduce one's risk of influenza or likely illness by about 10%. However, one has to completely adhere to mask wearing for the whole week. If one stops adhering to it, as 50% of people did, one loses all the effect. That is one of the problems. The second issue is that the evidence comparing cloth masks to surgical masks or the N95s shows clearly that cloth masks are worse and may actually increase the risk of infection. Therefore, that is why they are not recommended in hospitals or in health professional settings. What happens in these situations of uncertainty is that opinion divides. Some think that masks are a good idea, while someone else does not think they are, and people should not wear them. That is why we end up with people proposing them more and more. They say people should put them on in schools, pubs and shops. However, there is no clear evidence. They use observational data to inform their decision. If one looks at what has happened in the UK, for, for instance, they put masks in on 24th July. They were supposed to reduce the risk of infection by 40% over the next two weeks. In fact, infections detected have gone up. In effect, people are not looking at the evidence. When Norway looked at this, it said that at low circulation, the public health consequences were so minimal that it was not clear they worked. And even if they did work, it reckoned about 200,000 people would have to wear a mask fully for a week to prevent one infection. That is how one has to think about the uncertainty. If one is going to put a policy in place, that is fine. What one cannot do, however, is say it is evidence-based because when people talk about their evidence, they have again cherry picked low quality observational evidence that suit the argument. However, they have not picked further observational evidence. For instance, if one puts masks in, what is one expecting to happen to the case definitions and the reductions in the next two to four weeks to show it was a worthwhile policy to enact. This is a quote from Professor Anthony Staines. Quote, the evidence that masks protect a person from infection, particularly this type of mask, or the cloth masks some members are wearing, is very low. On the 26th of October, I sent a third request by registered post for a response from Mr. Leamy. On the 10th of November, a response from Mr. Leamy stated, 
Mr. McCarthy has met with you to discuss your points of correspondence. And this is a direct quote from that letter. I do not have anything additional to add to what Mr. McCarthy will have said to you. This is a very serious situation we are in. Evidence would seem to indicate that efforts to limit the spread of disease and ill health are doing the exact opposite. In effect, it seems we are inadvertently or otherwise harming our children. I would urge you, Mr. Leamy and McCarthy, to be under no illusions that you are responsible for your own actions with regard to the matters being discussed here. You are personally liable and should there be any injuries or worse, as a result, you will be held responsible in a personal capacity. Neither the government nor the ministers in office will provide you with legal protection that you might seek. I now have three demands. The first two I've already outlined. And this, the third, is even more important. I demand an official response in relation to, th to this study by the Doyle Committee of the 13th of August 2020 and the reasons why this study is being ignored. For the time being, I have kept this video out of the public domain to allow you time to respond. I look forward to your response.